Hello, welcome to Monday Night Live 87. Lots of things happening tonight. You have to put up with me having a rant, which, you know, sorry, but you do. And uh, we're going to talk about the Eureka Stockade. So stay tuned for a fun evening. So welcome a sm from a very, very smoky, very, very, uh, very, very hard to see, hard to breathe anywhere, Brisbane tonight. Um, first off, I hope everyone's safe and sound with these fires that are going on. It is uh, nothing short of horrible. Um, and I've decided to inflict everyone with my opinion of the whole thing tonight. I normally stay out of this stuff, but tonight, I'm in it. So, uh, welcome everyone. Um, let's get some comments going here. I can see Chris and Nikki and Grotty and Hobo and uh, Dan Allen and Craig and Tim and all oh, Lord Fridays here. Um, Stan... Brian, all rounder, everyone on YouTube, and then the guys over on the, the Facebook, uh, Mark and Jim and Adrian and Chris, Stuart, lots and lots of people here. So, welcome everyone to Monday Night Live 87. Michael Gantz here, hello, how are we? Right, so I almost didn't do the show tonight, as you can see, haven't had a shave, haven't been ready. I was just about, I had enough today. So I haven't done a whole lot. I've been watching what's happening across the country, across New South Wales, Queensland, WA, Northern Territory, all got fires going on. So um, <coughs> New South Wales' biggest fire alert, as far as I can tell, in all time for tomorrow. So, and watching what was going on on social media today made me absolutely cranky as hell. I'm really not in the mood for this tonight because I just, right in the middle of this, people are losing their homes. They're losing their lives. And you've got these politicians and people carrying on about climate change. And it's not one side of polit politics, it's not even the bloody Greens. It's all sides of politics are just absolutely making me so bloody angry that people are out there, the firefighters and people are losing everything they work for and all these blokes can do, all these people can do is carry on about <coughs> whose fault it is and what's going on. It is absolutely ridiculous and I'm absolutely embarrassed by the bloody political class and I've got no concept. There was a giant argument today on Facebook. I should stop reading this stuff. I should have stopped reading it at some stage today. Over, I learned a new term today. Boomers, you go on to some of these sites and, you, and, and anyone make a comment that no one believes with, they call you a boomer, apparently. Um, but there was a massive argument. Someone said something about backbirding and he was instantly dismissed because it's supposed to be hazard reduction. It's just, that was the topic of the whole thing. It was just like, oh my God, someone needs to be, yes. So, I have no idea why we don't listen to the blackfellas and the old farmers who had been doing it for years, right? The blackfellas have been doing it for a fair bit of time. They've got some experience around the place. So I've got no idea why we just... They know how to do it, you know? So, and... 
one place I do know a little bit about is Jurakai, right? The, 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 the forest where the lease is, right? It is, if it, if it catches fire, like I've talked to the fire wardens out there and a couple of people in the Royal Fire Brigade about the safety of me being out there and the safety of having people out there, for instance. And really, the general consensus out there is if a fire starts, they've really got 30 minutes to get it under control in that forest. Once they, if they can't get to it in 30 minutes, it's done, the whole forest will go. It is just, in places there's 12 inches of leaves, there's 12 inches of the small burning stuff, that if that catches fire, it will just, it will be an inferno. So, and they couldn't find a day. It's on the list to be backburned, or, no, sorry. Geez, I don't want to start a uh, social media war. Not backburned, but hazard reduction. It's on the list. They couldn't find a day for the last two winters where it was suitable to be burned. So it's, uh, yeah, um, it's just mental. So three years ago, they firebombed it. They put a dozen firebombs in the place. None of it took off. It was too wet. And none of the firebombs actually took off. Didn't burn anything. Burned a 10 metre round area, area and then went out. So anyway, I'm here. I'm pleased to be here. And uh, God, I hope no, we, we don't lose any more lives and tomorrow doesn't turn out anywhere near as bad of as what everyone's predicting. So, um, yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Tom Jones here. A fire fire. A back burn is used to control an existing fire. Yes. Exactly. Fuel reserve. Fuel. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hazard reduction is to prescribe to f maximise fuel removal with low hot flame height. That's exactly the difference. Thank you, Tom, for straightening me up. So, um, yeah. But that fire... that. If anyone's local here or anyone goes into these bushfire, if anyone goes into these state forests that have just got leaves that deep and twigs and small burning stuff, six, eight, ten inches deep, and there's a fire around, you need to get the hell out of there because uh, it's not a nice place to be. And, um, yeah. So, um, just to give you a bit of an idea, and, I mean... This is all, I'm sure everyone's looked at it. There's New South Wales, right? So there is 70, I think, fires going in New South Wales at the moment. I think it was 70. There's Queensland, right? There's a big cluster of them just out to the west of Brisbane here that I drove through the other night. I've never driven somewhere. I came back from the least late late whatever night it was and I saw three separate fires I was driving down the range and there was two fires one each side of the road just mental stuff WA's got some big fires going around Perth and up to the north um, and even the Northern Territory's got a big cluster of fires up near WA and Carrara and that sort of thing so and let's not forget in March we were looking at this from Victoria now, you can't tell me that that stuff is just, it's, there's got to be something going on with the way we're reducing, reducing the fuel load in these forests. And I think it is quite simply that we're not reducing the fuel load. And people should give themselves an uppercut if you're saying, no, we shouldn't do that. So, I hope there's no one here giving themselves an uppercut currently. So, anyway. Let me just forget about, that's my rant. I feel better about it now. I hope everyone stays safe. Um, and be very, very careful if you're, if you're heading into the bush in the next little while or at any stage. Um, yeah, they're the fires this month, this, this month I believe. 
in Australia. So you can see there the severity of stuff and yeah. Um, hmm. Right, so let me, uh, fuel loads, Tom Jones, fuel loads in the mountains west of Sydney are well up around in excess of 25 tonne per hectare. It's a bomb waiting going off. So Tom, I've got a question here for Tom, right? What does 25 tonne per hectare look? Is that six inches, eight inches, 10 inches on, on the ground? What is it? So um, I'll be really interested to know that. So um, yeah, yeah. Trisha's, Trisha, Trish over on Facebook there, she's in the Lockyer Valley. She's very, very close to the fires in the Lockyer Valley. So, you know, make sure you stay tr safe, Trish, and keep everyone safe out there. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and I don't particularly care whose fault it is. Just fix the bloody thing. Stick a match in it. So, like the the old farmers out, the old farmers I talk to, every winter they drive through and drop unload a box of matches. Like, I don't know. I'm no expert, but that seems like a it's a safer time to burn it when it's 15 degrees, no wind, than letting it take off whenever it bloody likes. So. Anyway, uh, Sydney has, Matty Hand says, Sydney has new catastrophic danger level. Um, yeah, that to make a new a category. So let me just see whether Tom got back to me and said, Tom, um, uh, Tom, 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 Tom. So Tom, when you talk 25 ton per hectare, what does that look like on the ground? It'd be very interesting. I'm very interested in that. So, um, yeah, if we can, uh, yeah. Right, that's right, the, the gold won't burn. You will have to do less raking, as Donny keeps on saying. Um, yeah, so, righto. <sighs> yeah, there's lots of people need to be very very safe and whatever you do if you haven't got a bulletproof fire plan right and there's a fire in your area just get the hell out of there like seriously it's uh it's mental so um so tom here uh doesn't include just the fuel lying on the ground but the undergrowth as well on average say you're excess of 30 centimeters so 12 inches yeah okay thanks for that tom that just puts that in pers into perspective I don't think the forest out at Warwick has got that much in it, but I tell you what, she's dry. If it goes, it'll go. So, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The CQ protector, when I was saying that to drop a match in, I didn't mean everyone go out and drop a match in it, just to be brutally clear, I mean, the authorities need to get out there and do this hazard reduction burning. So. It just doesn't take off in 38 degree heat when the wind's blowing 40 knots. So I hope no one thought I was advocating going out there and yeah, no, I wasn't. So yes. Um, yes. Right. Um, okay, so we've had a bit of a chat about the fires. Uh, Blakey's got fires 10 minutes from home, from his place. His keep safe. Um, Michael Gant, the water bomb has been flying over his place all for the last couple of days. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a mental, mental, mental time. So, right, so there's the rant. That's the first bit of the show out of the way. I'm, uh, I'm not talking about it anymore. Got me cranky. So, um, so let's talk about Eureka Stockade. We've got the reenactment here from, uh, uh, from the show. You can go and see the Eureka Shock stage. You can go and see it uh, at the uh, down in Victoria. That's my uh, backdrop tonight. So. The Eureka Stockade. So it's really the story of how Australians, Australia's democracy started. Um, the Before all this happened, to be able to vote in the new country, not necessarily country back then, it wasn't Australia back then, it wasn't a 
uh, democratic nation back then, but you had to own land to be able to vote. So we're talking about all these miners uh, not being able to vote, okay? Not having anything to, uh, to do with it. So in 1851, of course, the gold was discovered in Victoria and the government, of course, introduced licenses. And this is the story of our, our, our this is the story about how this came across. Um, so boy, like 1853, there's 10,000 people on a lot on these fields down in Victoria and a lot of the diggers were finding uh, very little gold the easy gold was the very very easy gold was gone um, and a lot of the diggers were finding the licensing fees expensive quite unfair um, and of course back then a lot of these government officials may have been a uh, A lot of these officials may have been fairly corrupt. There might have been a bit of pocket lining going on. So, um, in June of 1854, the new governor arrives. Governor Hotham arrives. Uh, Lieutenant, governor, Lieutenant Governor Hotham arrives in Victoria and uh, looks at Victoria's uh, books and they're in big debt. So, he orders license hunts. Okay, so he weekly license hunts. So he ups the ante, go and check these blokes' licenses every week, job done, right? So the, he then tours, um, bo again in uh, 1854, not, not far long after he arrives, I think August, June, uh, July, August, they do a tour of the gold fields to see what's happening out in the gold fields. And he was pretty well warmly welcomed by the diggers on the field. Um, so, because the, uh, the gold diggers, the, the, the boys on the field expected him to reduce the, reduce the cost of, his, uh, of the license fees. Um, but instead he comes back and he actually sees it as a way out of Victoria's rising debt problem. Um, and so he he ups the ante to checking their licenses twice a week and uh, and he ups the license fee. So that's the st that's what's upset a lot of these miners, okay? So twice weekly hunts they used to call them and uh, and, and and lifted the lifted the fee. So just uh, we uh, just want to get uh, just double check these comments here. Um, right, Mark from Country New South Wales is here. Hope everything's going well with you, mate. Um, yep, Central Queensland's in trouble with bushfires. Uh, Nikki's prospecting. Tanner, her son Tanner's happy because the school's closed tomorrow. Um, yeah, lots and lots of uh, talk about the fires. So make sure you make sure you stay safe, guys. Alright, oh, no. so let's go. Let's just skip forward in our story to October. We introduce uh, James Scorby. James Scorby gets murdered um, in an actual. Uh, he actually went went to the local tavern and the tavern was shut with his mate and he tried to he tried to get in the short story is he tried to get in and a scuffle ensure, ensured and he was killed by what was described at the time as a battle axe so i'm imagining a fairly serious looking axe so um so James Scob Scobie's died, and then the that same afternoon, an, in an inquest was launched, and the publican, uh, the hotel keeper, I should say, uh, James Bentley, denied taking past part um, part in the part in the scuffle, and the magistrate decided there was enough evidence, and he put the trial off. So, the 
the miners weren't very happy against that and the uh, Bentley was released due to this lack of ev evidence but the problem is many many of the uh, many of the miners um, believe that the magistrate and Bentley is it yeah Bentley the pub owner were mates and business partners so they didn't believe in any of the findings that were taken anyway so um, so there was a uh, a meeting to discuss this um, discuss the um, and a protest against Bentley's acquittal okay there was 10,000 miners there held near the Eureka Hotel um, and of course the famous picture in the background the burning of the Eureka Hotel is what ensured so the hotels burnt down the police and uh, the, the police commissioner gets pelted with eggs and they burn the pub down so right um, alright okay so there's just looking at some comments here there's apparently been lives lost in Rocky as well in the last few days. That's very sad news. I didn't know about that. Um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll just have a look here at these comments because we want to um, stay with it sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so... Uh, Baz is getting his uh, machine back. That's fantastic. So uh, off to a garret for a repair. Uh, miners right. We're going to get to the miners right. That's a very interesting part of the story. Okay. So so the public. So they had a further meeting um, in November. To, and you can imagine all the tension on the gold fields. The gold fields would have been just absolutely uh, mental at the time. Um, there's an artist's representation of the of the uh, of the burning of uh, the Eureka the Eureka Hotel. So um, so yeah, that, that that's the artist's representation of it. And don't forget, there was ten thousand people. This was a big, big gathering at the time. So you can imagine there's a lot of tension going on on these gold fields. That there is constant tension between the license check guys and the guys, uh, the guys doing the mining. The police would have been in a very, very difficult spot. It, um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely mental. So um, on the 11th of November, this day, okay, Back in 1854, okay, the 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 public meeting at Bakery Hill resulted in the formal establishment of the uh, what was it Ballarat Reform League, um, and part of the Ballarat uh, Reform League, if you like, the, the, the they wanted equal rights and representation. Um, so you've got to understand at this point in time the uh, the government you can't vote you're a miner you can't vote you don't own land too bad so they're demanding equal or equal rights on that and representation in the in the in the in the government in the parliament so um, so while all this is happening the, our, our friendly Lieutenant Governor Hotham um, is worried about what's going on. He's getting reports about what's going on all the time. So, the 12th Regiment arrives in Ballarat um, from, from Melbourne um, as reinforcements to the local, the local police and, uh, and uh, the military that was uh, based there. And Lo and behold, the Irish get in trouble here. The uh, the Irish 
decide to throw a few bits and pieces um, at the 12th Regiment and a drummer boy and uh, some of the soldiers were wounded. So that then lifted tensions again, lifted tensions further. You can imagine the, it would have been, the tension would have been palpable. So on the 29th of November, okay, we're getting very, very close to it here. The, uh, the Southern Cross flag, this fella here, um, let me just uh, get this sorted here, was flown for the first time. Uh, Bakery Hill, of course. Um, the Eureka flag, Eureka stockade flag was flown for the first time. Um, and uh, they sent, they had a delegation of, uh, of people go and talk to the governor and the people in charge. Okay, so, however, that delegation was rejected. Okay, um, so let me just check these messages here. We'll just have a, uh, yeah, let me just have a good look here. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Calling the racist, what's been on Facebook? Are you post your bet on the winner. Oh, okay. So apparently Facebook is a bit behind or in front of YouTube, so I don't know. Um, hang on a tick, we've got some interesting information here. Private John Egan was the drama boy with the 12th. Oh, that's fantastic. I couldn't, I couldn't find that information. Thank you, Jason. Um, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, we're talking about fishing licenses. The government is still controlling the narrative. Have you noticed that everything the government gets in... I'm getting back to this fire thing, but everything the government gets involved with, don't, they don't improve it. Yes. Anyway, well, maybe they do, but... A lot of things they muck up. But anyway. All right, so, um, let me get myself back here. I've got to stop ranting. I normally don't get involved in this uh, political stuff, and I probably shouldn't tonight, but anyway. Um, so, Southern Cross was flown for the first time. Um, the, the delegation of diggers that went for and claimed deeper rights and representation um, um, and they came back and said no they're not they weren't doing anything about it um, where are we so this is the first night where the where the Southern Cross was flown for the first time that a lot of the diggers started to burn their licenses so the next day the we're talking about the 30th of December 30th of November right a big license hunt happens um, and the no one the diggers refuse to show their licenses and so the um refuse to show their licenses and so the trigger that triggers the troopers to fire warning shots um while the, while there while at the meeting of bakery hill they peter layla gets elected the head of the diggers uh, calls for volunteers. Hundreds of volunteers swear an oath to defend their rights and liberties under the flag of the Southern Cross. So, um, and they start building the stockade. So, uh, yes. So the stockade is being built on the 30th of November. So, um, right. Uh, Baz is, sounds like he's having uh, sat having uh, trouble with a couple of his machines there. CQ Detectorist. I think I need a Snickers. CQ Detectorist suggests I, I uh, need a Snickers. I've been wound up today. But I don't like idiots. So uh, I'm not a big fan of idiots. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I need to take a chill pill. So maybe I should actually have something you know, a bit serious in my cup tonight, just to, you know, settle down a bit. 
The problem with that is normally I get louder before I get settled. So anyway, we, we better not do that. So um, yeah. Anyway, I get distracted by these comments. So um, yeah. Uh, that's uh, we say me Yes, absolutely. Have a Kit Kat. I need a break. Yeah, Narelle's right. Maybe I should uh, be into the chocolates rather than the rather than the bourbon. Anyway, I'm not into the bourbon, by the way. I very rarely drink on the. Just do it now. Now we're getting into all the advertising slogans here. Thanks very much, guys. Right, back to the story. So, uh, so stockade. So first of December, right? Oh, it's a full moon. That's what's going on. I'm cranky because it's a full moon. Thanks, Trish. So, uh, Trish just mentioned it's a full moon. Uh, yeah. Um, so, 1st December. 30th, 30th of November. 1st December. Stockade still being built. All right. Uh, Crestbrook, the Crestbrook Creek boys arrive. So, the miners from Crestbrook Creek to join up. Three or four hundred volunteers. Um, but... Those guys put a big strain on the on the stockade, if you like, because they arrive with basically nothing. They needed to be armed, fed, clothed, you know, bedding, all the rest of it. So it really put a bit of a strain on what was going on. Um, and uh, so also on that day, the uh, what's his name here? Major General Sir Robert Nicholl leaves Mel Melbourne for Ballarat with 800 men. So, um, and Father Smythe, who's a c Catholic preacher out there, met with the commissioner to try and get a peace proposal together, and it was completely rejected. So, um, yeah. Um, so you can see there's lots of complexities going on and it is the 3rd of December when the troopers attacked the stockade. Early hours of the morning, all the boys had they'd been in there for a couple of days, all the boys had been slipped off and uh, apparently a lot of them had slipped off to go for a drink and, uh, and, uh, and that's when the troopers attacked. 300 soldiers and the police. I don't know what happened to the extra. Uh, it's always fascinated me that they leave Melbourne with 800 men, 300 attack plus the police. So maybe there was a lot of police there. Not too sure. Um, but I've always found that funny that there wasn't, there's a 500 men discrepancy there. So, yes. So. Um, yeah, and Dean makes a good point, and you know, I'm a bit cranky tonight, and you know, with, with, with everything I see going on, and Dean makes a good point that the Eureka Stockade has got some lessons in it for everyone, um, and you know, these guys, these guys believed in something, and they stood up and they absolutely fought for it. So, you know, there, there, is, there is a lesson to be learnt in a lot of this stuff. And, um, you know, it's a bit, bit the Australian way, a bit the mateship and standing, standing shoulder to shoulder. Um, yeah. So, it, 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 you know, yeah. So, yeah. Right, so... Yeah, it, it, you know, Australians tend to stand shoulder to shoulder and, you know, you look at places like Gallipoli and some of the battles that Australians have, uh, have been involved in, you know, we, we, tend to, we tend to stick our heads in stuff that uh, is pretty hard to win. So, um, and this was another case that, you know, there might have been, uh, there might have been 10,000 diggers on the field, but I guarantee there wasn't 10,000 blokes in that stockade, not on a... Uh, not on a night when the pubs are open, and uh, you know, I I, I think that um, yeah, I think that that's uh, 
because it dawned the, uh, the, 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 the stockade. So after the stockade was attacked, a brief battle followed. 22 diggers and seven military uh, men are being killed, many wounded. 120 diggers arrested and marched to the government camp. Um, and only 13 were charged with treason. So, um, yeah. So, all right, we got uh, Aussie Alchemist here. Thought you might have been down the Gold, Gold Coast beaches full moon. Yes, it's a. Um, it would be a very very pleasant evening down there. I may even uh, run down the beach later on tonight, actually, because uh, I uh, I could do a little chill out session. Grab the Max out, hit the beach with the map Max. I think that would suit me just right so mm. so um, yeah um, yeah that Tom makes a point Tom, ten, Tom makes a good point over on the YouTube that tensions were very very high bit fired up like I am tonight and uh, they took a stand and they did take a stand the problem is the stand that they needed to take was two days later and the boys got a bit distracted and went to the pub so half of them were drunk when the attack actually happened which it's not really it's very Australian I think that uh, yeah um, yeah so a lot of guys talking about here or a few guys uh, Crouch and uh, Gold Den prospecting came home today um, early so um, yeah obviously due to fires and what have you so um um yeah yep so uh where are tom hey oh hundreds like they confused ben tonight yeah chill pill for ben yes gary oh bodell um yes someone's annoyed me watch the start of the show i won't go over it again because i uh I think everyone gets irritated with me ranting. So, um, anyway. Right, so. So, 13 diggers charged. We're back to this story. Let's finish this story off with the uh, with a couple of little tales here. So, 13 diggers charged. By February, all of those 13 were brought to trial. All of them acquitted. Okay? Um, during this time, they had a... Uh, between Mar between the stockade in December and March, they had a commission into the gold fields to look at the gold fields, and they handed the final report down. And this here, and I haven't seen moth tickle in a long time. Now moth tickle was a long time viewer of this show, and I haven't seen moth tickle for a while. But he sent me this after one Eureka stockade. This was his relations, miners right, by, well it was 1864. So, part of the final report into the, um, with the Goldfields Commission, that the, 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 the gold license be replaced by an export duty, so if you're sending it out of the country, you get taxed, okay? And a miners right, like that one, Right, that uh, would allow blokes to go mining. Okay, so it was absolutely, um, absolutely um, the the basis of our current mining fossil king licenses, miners' rights, if you like. They've certainly been watered down in a lot of other states. And, uh, yeah, um, so, and this is what led to everyone, well, at that stage, everyone, all the men getting the right to vote. This was the start of our democracy sort of thing. Obviously, the women didn't get the vote until whenever it was, certainly well into the 1900s, mid-1900s, so, um, and Peter Peter Laylaw got elected into the uh, into the council into the into the government. So, so a fantastic story.
I really do like the uh, the old miners, right? That was a photo that uh, someone by the name of Moth Tickle sent me, um, which I thought was a pretty cool name. So we might just leave that up in the up in the in the background for the rest of the show. So um, yeah. So that is the story of Eureka Stockade. So, for tonight, um, the miners' right was very, very. I think it says something there. It 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 doesn't really relate. Uh, no, one pound. See up there. Uh, see at the top there. Um, it was one pound. So what that relates to in uh, today's money, it would have been a lot of money. So, um, yeah, yeah, so. Now, I want to touch on a couple of things. I haven't got it loaded. Carrara, um, the C Queensland stage of the uh, Australian Gold Panning Championship. So the Queensland edition is happening at the, uh, at the Carrara Nugget Hunt. I think that's... Uh, I think that's uh, a fantastic thing that's going to happen at the Carrara Nugget Hunt. We've also had confirmation that Andrew Austin's going to be doing a massive, massive relic hunting um, event out there. I'm going to see if I can put him onto a few spots that are relic-y. Um, and I've got some... Uh, I've got a few good spots because I don't really hunt too many relics, so um, I haven't smashed them. Um, so, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get some good relic sites out there. Um, I think it's going to be a fantastic event. I think we'll probably have, like, if we don't have over a hundred people there, um, sitting around the campfire at night, I think there'll be something wrong. Um, ticket prices, I'm yet to work out, but they're going to be, I, I, can almost guarantee that they're going to be below 50 bucks for the weekend. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's the sort of thing that um, it's the sort of thing where it's affordable. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be dramatically less than 50 bucks. So uh, I'm just waiting for the cost of insurance to come back. Insurance, another thing that I have to shrug my shoulders with and, you know, get cranky about, I suppose, if I was in the in a mood. So, um, so yes, so make sure you're at the Crow and Nugget Hunt. We're going to have tour of the, uh, we're going to have a tour of the lease, no charge. We're going to have Donnie out there training on VLFs, no charge. We're going to have people out there that will train you on, uh, the the high end mine lab machines, no extra charge. We're going to have prizes, no extra charge. We're going to have the panning competition, and I, um, and I believe no extra charge. But I hope we have to confirm that one because there may need to be an entry fee to be able to be part of the uh, Australian Championships. But we're trying to do this, and anyone that was at the last Nugget Hunt. I did a bit of a tour around the bush saying, showing signs what to look for. Like, we'll try and do that again. No extra charge. So, the whole thing will be jammed full of stuff to do at no extra charge. So, um, yeah, um, I, I think it will be a, a cracking, cracking, uh, cracking job. Um, a cracking weekend. I would also, does anyone have an update? Is Andrew Austin uh, um, here? Andrew Oft, Oft, Austin, are you here? Uh, rat detectorist. We'd nice to get an update of, uh, be nice to get an update on how many rat coins are still in the, in the ground. Does anyone have a, uh, um, does anyone have a, an update on how many coins are still in the ground. I think there's still a few coins in the ground. So um, another great event that's happening right now is the Australian-wide um, coin hunt from 
rat. It's important, right, if you're involved in these coin hunts or generally digging in parks, that you don't make a mess. Um, you should leave the ground as it was, as if no one was, as if you weren't there. So, um, so make sure you're filling your holes. Make sure you know how to dig a plug if you need to dig it. Don't dig a plug in a park that is bone dry, right? Because the plug won't survive. Okay. If you don't know how to properly dig in a park, don't dig it. Hook up with someone on here, right? All these people here are nice. Well, 90% of them, I'm picking out a couple here that aren't nice, but you know, 90% of them are nice people. Hit someone up in your local area and get them to show you how to do it, okay? Don't make a mess in these parks, so. Um, yes, so, um, yeah, make sure. So, what, Brett, what happened to the Toowoomba Rat coin? Uh, the Toowoomba Rat coin was a, there was a complaint from the neighbours. I don't know exactly what happened. There was some sort of complaint. The whole, the coin was removed and I believe either replanted or soon to be replanted. So, um, yeah. So, uh, that's what happened to the rat coin. There was a couple of coins that needed to be replaced. Uh, to be replanted, if you like. Um, yes, so... Oh, so Todd's here got an update on the Toowoomba coin. We're planting that coin that was in Toowoomba on a private property in Summer Home. It should be ready by the weekend. So Paul got the Coffs Harbour coin. Well done, mate. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So... Um, no, it wasn't. I don't think it was a heritage listed park. I think there was another coin that was in a heritage listed park that was removed um, very, very quickly sort of thing. So, um, yeah. Right, so, um, but the most important thing is that coin hunt is for, uh, there's a charity attached to it, Ronald McDonald House. So if you if you can spare a uh, a buck or two, jump onto that GoFundMe page. Go over to the Rat Facebook page. Drop a buck or two in the tin to thank Andrew. He doesn't want any money for it, but to thank Andrew for the effort he's put in. Um, so uh, yes, yes. Right. So uh, what else is happening here? Um, yeah, like Dan, Dan makes a good point. Dan Allen, I, it's a point we shouldn't have to make, but I suppose we do have to make it, Dan, is you shouldn't be using a pick in a park. You should be using a little shovel or a, a, one of the little tiger groundhog diggers. So, um, righto. So, Lynn, can Chili find gold yet? Now, here it is here. How to train your dog to find gold. Let me just clear that. Let me see if it, this works. Let me see. Let's try that. How to train your dog to find gold. This is the book. So Chili is no good at finding gold as, as yet. To be honest with you, Chili was more interested. So Chili went out to the... I took Chili out to the lease. And uh, Chili is... Chili, for those that don't know, is a red cattle dog. He's only about 16 weeks old. And Chili was more interested in trying to get the yabbies off the bottom of the dam than he was in looking for gold. It was very, very, uh, I was very disappointed. Uh, I knew I should have got a golden retriever. No, just kidding, I like cattle dogs, so, yeah. But I've got this book, and I'm gonna have a crack at this book. It actually, when you read the book, uh, it actually makes sense. So I'm going to read this book uh, and I'm going to see if I can train this dog to find gold, okay? I will let you know whether this book is absolute rubbish or it's a worthwhile investment. So, yes. Um, 
But um, it makes sense. It makes sense. It's the smallest book on the planet. Like, the, the, it only goes for, like, the introductions on page four, and the book finishes on page 23. It's 19 pages long. It holds my... It's a perfect size book for my attention span at the moment. So, righto. Um, yes, Chili successfully caught yabbies, right, and sticks and mud, and then decided to... Uh, decided to uh, crawl on my lap and crawl, try to crawl over my back and, you know... He tries to bite the jackhammer. He's, he's a handy bugger at the moment. So, but anyway, um, Mike and Mike Jenny Gibson has three sausage dogs. Does that mean they were fine sausages? Quite, I'm sure they will find sausages. But you've got a whole fleet of dogs there. You could train to find gold. Can you imagine that? A whole fleet of sausage dogs out in the bush getting the gold for you. So, I think that's fantastic. You know, that's cheered me up a little bit tonight. So, uh, the thought of three sausage dogs banging their way through the bush looking for gold. Sensational. So, uh, righto guys. Um, I didn't announce a prize tonight. Do you want a prize tonight? Um, what do you want for a prize? USBs? I haven't got any, uh, I haven't got any mugs at the moment. So, uh, yeah, USBs. What do we want for prizes? So, I uh, oh, see Brett. Brett's Brett's made a uh, Brett's made a Brett's made a terrible. He's he's actually put brought my mood down again. Brett, cattle dogs find cattle. Golden retrievers find gold. Thanks, Brett. I knew I bought the wrong. Uh, I knew I bought the wrong breed of dog. Should have bought a golden retriever. So, uh, you know. But you wouldn't be seen dead with a golden retriever, would you? So, yeah. Oh, that with now Hobo has got a uh, Hobo has got a great idea for a dog, a dog that you're training to find gold. Call it uh, GPZ Seven Thousand, or just call it Z. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Okay, so what we're going to do, right? I'm out of mugs at the moment. What I'm going to do, okay, is see this patch here, Eureka flag patch. One of those patches. One of these patches. One of these patches. That's the Golden Spur mining one. It's actually yellow. The dig is actually yellow. And a USB, right? I'm going to send that out to and no I, i'm out of pay dirt at the moment so i'm going to send that out eureka bat patch the the two patches usb stick um i'm going to send out uh those one to youtube one to the facebook how does that sound um only because they're sitting here in front of me and uh, so I could give away two of Nikki's stickers but I don't have two of Nikki's stickers well I don't have your stickers Nikki so Cameron oh no Cameron Cameron has he, he's, he's, he's lost his Garrett gold pan it floated down the river that's devastating so righto so we'll just pick a random comment here from both Where's the randomizer? Um, where's the randomizer? I'm a bit disorganized tonight. Nothing unusual there. Um, I did get a bit, I, yeah, I've been a bit off today. So, uh, yeah. So let's just run this randomizer now for for uh, for this uh, Facebook here. So um, so the Facebook one goes to 
Bradley Sterrett. Congratulations, Bradley. Um, I don't know where Bradley lives, but congratulations, mate. Um, I will contact you straight after the so show. And, uh, and then on the YouTube. Now, YouTube, you need to contact me. I can't contact you. So let me just run it here. Right. Daily Digger Coin Chaser Prospector. Now, there's a handle and a half. Congratulations, Daily Digger Coin Chaser Prospector. You have won three patches and a USB stick with 48,000 gold mine locations on it. So congratulations. So tonight we finished about five minutes early. So I'm more than happy just to sit around and have a chat if anyone's, uh, anyone's got... Um, any questions about it? Yeah, these USB sticks, there's a question about USB. There's, I should explain that. There's actually 40, I think there's 47,000 historic gold mine locations on it. So um, what the, uh, what the, I'll see if I can just pick this up quickly here. Or what the uh, East Coast, uh, it'll be in here, I think. I'll just see if I can just pull this up quickly. So here's, uh, is that it? Oh, well, sort of. Um, I can make it so that it is. So I'll just put it there. Like that, if you load that on Google Earth, like that's got... So the Queensland section, if you look at that Queensland section from about there up, that's the full Queensland waypoints, those ones up there. Okay, New South Wales and Victoria aren't fully loaded on that map. So that's what's on the um, on these uh, USB sticks. So, yeah, so if you look at Queensland and then reflect that across the rest of the states, that's what's on the uh, USB sticks. So, um, so yeah, that's what's on the USB sticks. So, um, yeah, um, they are on my, uh, they are on the website, I think they're 30 bucks. But, uh, yeah, um, so there, yeah, you can, you can pick them up if you want. However, the reason I don't promote them for sale is all of this information is available online on your local uh, Mines Department website. So all we've done here is um, correlate all the information. So that's what's happening with that. So I don't promote them, but they are available. So yes, uh, Donny has a question um, of banning the Tom Boston, the Chili Man, for from uh, from the uh, um, from the uh, Carrara Nugget Hunt after he stitched Donny up. I'm pretty keen on that actually because he stitched me up too. So uh, yeah, uh, Doug wants more rants. Uh, well, I'll get myself. The problem is, Doug, I'm quite happy to rant, but uh, I get myself in, uh, in trouble. So, um, yeah. Nikki wants to know, Nikki Bailey, Nikki's prospecting, great YouTube channel. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, got over on it, do that. Um, uh, wants to know is who's up for a New South Wales version of the Carrara Nugget Hunt? Um, she's asking that question there. So, um, yeah, I'd be keen on that. Um, um, so very, very keen on that, Nikki. So count me in. Um, yeah. So, um, the date for the Carrara Nugget Hunt is the weekend after Easter in April. I don't know exactly the... Oh, here's Andrew Austin. Andrew Austin, how many rat coins are still in the ground, Andrew? We were having this discussion a little bit earlier, and I understand you've been at work, but uh, but yes, how many coins are still in the ground, mate? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, yeah, um, yes. So uh, right, so. 
Ozzy Ockerman's bent gate, three, second turn right through the no, gate. Now, what? I'm a bit confused by Aussie Alchemist uh, gate three second right through the gate. What's happening? There? So Aussie, you might need to uh, explain what that what that is there. So um, gate three second turn right. Yes, I, I have to work out what's going on there. So, uh, James. James asks, where you can go to learn how to use a mine lab? Uh, James, whereabouts are you located? I don't know where you're located, so I can't really help you there. I do have a lease, and uh, we do training there. I know training happens all over the country, so, um, yeah, um, absolutely. Righto. Guys, please. Uh, Stay safe. Um, oh, Andrew's, Andrew just mentioned there's still 12 coins in the ground. Stay safe. Um, make sure you, you know, if you've got elderly neighbours, check on the, them. The smoke's knocked around my elderly neighbour. We're keeping an eye on her. So, um, so yeah, just uh, keep an eye on people. Um, and uh, don't be going into a in there, any bush that you know you can't get out of real in a real hurry if there's something going on. Righto guys, that's Monday Night Live 87. Thanks very much for your time and putting up with my rants. Um, and uh, next week's show will be a quick show from the lease. We're out the lease next week. So um, we'll be out the lease, hopefully with some gold in our pocket and a smile on our dial. So. Righto guys, thank you very much for your time. We will see you all next week. Good night guys.